What is up, everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls 2 Crown of the Sunken King. Guts is looking a little bit different, isn't he? Uh, that's because, in case you didn't catch the Dark Souls 2 Let's Play bonus episode, I said I was going to be rocking a different build for each piece of the three DLCs. Uh, this one, I'm rocking a little bit of a hybrid cleric build. Uh, I guess a paladin or a templar is what you would call it. I'll show the build itself off in detail a little bit later on. Before we get into the meat of the DLC though, I just want to sh go around and show off some things related to the DLC that got patched in recently. Uh, first, the Majula chest contains this Murakumo, uh, which is not an ordinary one, it's actually a recolored one. Uh, there's been an ongoing event where each week the contents of the chest change leading up to today, the 22nd when the DLC drops. And inside we get this color-swapped Murakumo, which I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. This one happens to be a blue one. There are all different colors. You get them randomly, I guess, to get a color that you like. This is kind of a neat, although out of place for a Souls game idea. The uh, I guess you would trade for the color you want with other people. You would just have to hook up online and figure out who's got uh, that perfect shade of pink for you, for your hot pink build. Uh, so next up, we're gonna come up to a monument, which I didn't realize had anything important on it during the main playthrough. Um, I don't know that I would call it important, but it certainly is now. Uh, so if you go up and exam- oh wait, that's the worldwide death counter. Uh, so if you go around to the other side, there's there used to be a plaque here that was kind of scrawled out, but it says, Seek the land of an ancient king in the Black Gulch deep below. Uh, I know on some of the other language versions, uh, it said maybe something that was a little bit revealing about the lore, possibly, if you can take it to be canon, but I don't exactly remember what. Uh, in the English language version, it used to be unreadable, though, and that's just setting the stage for where this DLC is going to take place, but there's still something I want to show off before we get into the meat of the DLC itself, so we're going to head to the Undead Crypt, where Vendrick is. So I'll cut ahead and see you in a second. And we're back. This is Velstat's room, and this is leading up to Vendrick, who, if you call it the bonus episode of Let's Play Dark Souls 2, I previously defeated. So this is something that they patched in for the DLC. His corpse here now serves as a memory which you can delve into using the Ashen Mist Heart. And in the memory of the king, if you go up those stairs, it just ends. Uh, there's nothing up there, but if you come over here, we find a non-hollowed-out Vendrick. So let's talk to him and see what he has to say. Seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. I am Vendrick, ruler of Drang Lake. Seeker of fire, deliverer of crowns. What do you see in the flames? Find the crowns and your own answers. The crowns hold the strength of lords from times long past. Seek adversity. As befits you, seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. I am no king. I am more fit to be a jester. I was unaware of my own blindness. We are feeble vessels with feebler souls. We would cast aside the prop of life only to face greater hardship. Are you another such fool or something more? I fail to see your design, young moth. But, I see very little these days. And that's pretty much it. So this is pretty much just setting up the plot of the three episodes of DLC coming out for Dark Souls 2, all revolving around these crowns Vendrick used to possess. And since there's nothing else here, we can finally get on with the meat of the DLC, so we're going to be once again cutting ahead as I warp to the second bonfire of the Black Gulch. 
All right, we are back at the second bonfire in the Black Gulch. This is the one closest to the Rotten's boss room, and we're gonna need to be heading through the Rotten's boss room in order to access the area which warps you to the DLC. So if you remember, there is a little hidden passageway that leads out to a circular antechamber where the primal bonfire used to be, and the primal bonfire used to be all by itself in this room, but now we have this green glowing poisonous moss covering the wall, and we have a shrine of some sort. And this shrine should look a little familiar because it's three serpents all decapitated, and that same symbol pops up uh, elsewhere in the game. It actually, I think it's in the Shrine of Winter that you see that uh, quite a bit. Now, you can warp into this little teaser initial DLC area even if you don't own Crown of the Sunken King. However, you need a special item which you receive automatically once you purchase the DLC uh, called the Dragon Talon in order to open up that door just over yonder. Which I will now do, and uh, the DLC area I have not really explored all that much on my other character. Um, so this is semi-blind. I mean, I have gone through a lot of this stuff uh, in the early goings of the DLC. So I have seen the beginning parts of this. I have not touched any of the bosses in the DLC, and I've heard that there are three, the main antagonist being this ancient dragon who I believe goes by the name of Sin, who we'll see relatively early, and we'll see him a couple of times actually before the fight commences. And god damn, look at that view. I love this. Shulva the Sanctum City. This is essentially like this sunken necropolis, this stepped pyramid existing in this enormous cavern. This is an environment we haven't really seen before, and that is Sin who you can actually see in the uh, trailer for the Crown of the Sunken King, uh, for the for the trailer for all three DLC episodes, actually. And a lot it, it looked in the trailer like he was dead hanging over the entrance to a cave. And that led a lot of people to speculate that he might be Seath. But you can see that it's clearly not Seath. There's no way. Um, he actually bears a lot of physical similarities to Calamy, but even then, the color palette's wrong for it to be Calamy. Could be a palette swap Calamy? Could be a mummified Calamy. I'm, I'm curious to learn more about him. Um, this switch, I'm not sure if there's any way to trigger it, or if it is actually a switch. I'm going to try using an arrow because there are some switches that look exactly like this later on in the level. And it obviously didn't work, but there are switches later on. Which uh, you have to hit to trigger some sort of plat moving platform or an elevator. There's kind of a puzzly vibe to this whole DLC area. And actually I'm stupid because I just remembered exactly uh, how you trigger that, what's in that gap. It's actually an elevator. You use that glowing obelisk right there, and I believe that triggers the elevator. And it's a multi-level elevator, too. So I'm gonna try to use the binocular trick, which I forgot to really point out too much uh, in the bonus episode, but you can use the, bino the binoculars to zoom in, find the center of the screen, and use it to kind of manually aim your spells. Uh, and I'm not going to waste my Great Lightning Spears, my limited charges of them, because they reduced in the patch. They nerfed the shit out of how many spell uses you get out of certain offensive miracles. Uh, Great Lightning Spear, they did a number on them. I have uh, a little bit of gear, 30 attunement. Uh, the I don't have the Northern Ritual Band on, because it cuts your health in half. I have a lot of ways to increase the number of charges of spells I get, and including having three stacks of this miracle. And I have a maximum cast of 12. Uh, that's because they reduce the number of Great Lightning Spears you get by 70%. Uh, and they... They said they buffed the damage, but they screwed something up and it's now doing less damage than it's supposed to. Uh, this Cleric build that I 
am using, they nerfed it to hell and back. Uh, but it's still gonna do the job of getting us through this DLC, or so I hope. And I'm sure it'll work just fine. Um, the weapon I'm using is a Lightning Defender Greatsword plus 5. Again, I'll talk about the build and show uh, the specifics of it off a little bit further on, but we want to explore this DLC area uh, before I do that. We want to get a good glimpse of what's inside here. And I love this DLC area from the limited amount I played of it. Uh, again, this always comes with the disclaimer that maybe it'll just shit itself later on, but uh, so far I love everything about this area. I love the level design, I love the little puzzle aspect to it, with all of the obelisks that change the landscape and the environment. Um, I, I, the layout is really good, the, just like the level design in general is probably, it makes it probably one of the best areas in the entire game, that's including everything in the main game. One of the best design levels, uh, from the limited amount I played, which is like the first 40 minutes of the DLC. It's enough to get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Plus, the enemies are good, too. Uh, so far, we're only seeing the sunken soldiers and the archers, but... Even they have qualities that make them kind of interesting. Like, you noticed the melee enemies have a unique trait to them, which makes them dif uh, different from other melee enemies. They can't be staggered, or rather, not staggered, that's the poor choice of words, because that's actually a game mechanic. But rather, they can't be hit stun locked. Uh, they're too resistant. Oh, that was a shitty jump. Uh, they have too much poise, I guess. So you have to be very careful about how you approach them. Because you can't just catch them off guard and hit stun them to death. Oh god, like this. This is a pretty bad situation. Luckily that R2 attack on the Lightning Defender Greatsword is super good. Uh, that thrust follow-up attack. Uh, the Lightning Defender Greatsword has a whole bunch of properties. They're pretty neat. They'll show off once we get to a second bonfire because the first two bonfires are pretty few and far between and one of the more interesting properties of the Lightning Defender Greatsword is it has a self uh, enchantment buff, but it reduces the durability by like a fifth or something, uh, which I can't really I can't take the durability hit this at this point because of how far apart the bonfires are. I just love how the level design actually makes you think about where you're going, and you can actually get lost here. Oh, and these guys are nasty. Oh, they're such a, a an evil idea. Uh, if you get closer to them, like I'm about to do, you'll notice that these aren't just poison statues arranged uh, to face every direction. They are mobile poison statues because they're on the back of some sort of giant lizard. So they're mobile, 360 degree facing poison vomiting statues really evil idea and there are just tons of like optional side routes in this area in this huge sunken necropolis I love that word <laughs> good excuse to use it and here we are uh, getting a another glimpse at a couple new enemies uh, if you run into these sacks they're full of corrosive acid so we don't we want to be a little bit careful about what we're hitting in here uh, these bugs will also occasionally just run around the room spewing that corrosive mist, breaking our equipment down. So you want to take them out before they get a chance to do that, otherwise they're not that threatening. All they really have are these kind of flying headbutt attacks. Um, but it's generally best to take them at a range if possible. Wait, does this lead out anywhere? No, I thought I had to make a jump from out here to get back to where I was, but I think that's up on the second floor. And there are a couple more of these bugs. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, no! I was just barely on the edge of the hurt box. And on top of that, he knocked me into the corrosive mist. This is what I'm talking about. They don't just stand still while they spew this stuff out. Like, every enemy in this, in this area that I've encountered makes you think about the encounter you're going into. Even the composition of, like, the more standard 
melee enemies and the archers, you find tons of archers, so you really have to think about how you're approaching every encounter. So far, it's just, like, straight up excellent. I really hope that the later parts of this DLC area, and of course the DLC that's dropping on uh, in August and September, I hope they're just as good because, man, th like, some of the stuff in here blows the main game away. Like, I've already done more exploration of this one area than, like, probably 80% of the levels in the main game. It's ironic that they put this area in the Black Gulch just because the Black Gulch is the smallest and most linear level in the entire game. Oh shit, he dropped off the ceiling. Didn't know they could actually hurt you when they do that. Uh, I, sh uh, I probably shouldn't be using the Great Lightning Spear at this range, but I don't want to... Ah, God. Yeah, that was a waste. Because they closed the distance faster than I was anticipating. I didn't want to get too close in, in case they started doing their corrosive mist. Is he shortcut ahead? Oh. We haven't even really left the main hub of this level yet. And we found tons of side paths. It's crazy. So yeah, we have uh, another variety of the sunken knight. This one with a lance. Uh, Great Lance, it looks like, and it has the same moves as the Great Lance, which makes them kind of dangerous enemies once you get them in pairs. Or again, once they're accompanied by archers, which there are tons of in this area. And yeah, there are even some really cool enemies up ahead we haven't seen yet. Uh, this area also drives my wanderlust crazy because it's like every couple steps you take it's oh god elevator obelisk that manipulates the environment so you can go in a new place side path side path forked path every god there's so many different paths here i get i get kind of option paralysis with uh areas like this it's like you've too many choices of places to go uh, this is gonna be dicey, and I only have four Great Lightning Spears I've left myself with, which is foolish. Also, in case you haven't noticed, uh, I am not super used to playing this build. So that's- this is partially why I decided to do this, to do a different build for every DLC episode. Uh, one, just because it breaks up the monotony of constantly see seeing me play a Souls game as a straight up, like, sword and board. And it gives you a, a taste of all the different playstyles, which... If you haven't played a Souls game before, especially if you haven't played one multiple times... It's hard to appreciate just how much different builds and different playstyles completely change the game. I'm falling back a lot on melee, which is typical for me and my, uh... At least my playthroughs on video. But just the fact that you have this hybrid element of casting and melee, and you're a lot squishier with this build, that alone just changes it up so much, it turns it into a different game. I'm not going to stick around here too much, I don't think. Um, I am going to take him- oh shit! You gotta watch because you're used to being able to stagger melee enemies, and you can't do that here. So me pop a great heal. So many good healing options as a cleric do. Great heal is excellent. I'm gonna hit that obelisk now and send it down, and I think I'm gonna hitch a ride down here and see if this brings me anywhere. Like, this is what I mean. Like, so, it, it, the level design is fucking amazing in this one. Already we're seeing stuff that just wasn't present in the main game. Try ranged battle, what does that mean? I thought there was an item out on this ledge, but I guess not. There's gonna be tons of stuff I miss in this playthrough too, because this is so fresh and so new. I am liking it a whole lot though. Uh, I guess there's nothing, well... How the hell would I get back up? Maybe that's what the, the message was trying to say, try ranged battle, like maybe I can hit one of the obelisks that controls the elevator. Can I even see one of them from here? Can I see one of those switches? 
Maybe I can hit it with a bow, because I know that's possible. I just don't know if it's possible from where I am. Uh, if not, I'm just going to homeward bone and... Pretty much get right back to where I was by running past the first, like, five or so enemies. Yeah, let's do that. That's... I mean, I, I have to believe that there is a way out of that situation that I didn't just get myself stuck there. On... In a situation where I'm forced to uh, use the aged feather to warp out. Uh, if that's the case, though, and I did get myself stuck there without the aged feather or homeward bone, that's probably going to wind up being one of my only criticisms, if that's the case. And I don't even know if there's another way out of that situation. Oh, shit. I'm now realizing I forgot to lower the elevator again, so I can't just bypass them just yet. Oh, shit. Yeah, we have a couple varieties of these sunken knights. All of them share the same property that they cannot be staggered. Uh, we have the mace-wielding ones, which hit pretty hard. The sword-wielding ones, which I think are more dangerous than the mace enemies because of their combos. And then the lance ones. Uh, so we're heading to the right down here, ignoring the archers, because we saw pretty much all we need to see when we were up in that hub area earlier. Uh, there's a path up here. What do these obelisks do here? Uh, they're raising one of these. Uh, it looks like a building, almost. Lloyd's Talisman. There are a couple of items to collect up along this path. I think it leads out to a dead end, though. So I'm gonna get up here, and then... Oops! I didn't mean to do that! Oh, shit! Oh, God. Uh, so instead of picking that item up, uh, I could die here. I accidentally used an item. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Now, it, I feels pretty safe now. I heard an arrow plink down behind me. Uh, I see an item I missed. Do I want to fight all this stuff that's pissed off at me now? Yeah, I do. I'm just curious about what that is. Uh, May Sunken Knight, not too bad. It's by himself, so we'll get a nice backstab. And I think I'm at 50 faith, so this Lightning Defender Greatsword plus 5, it, it, it's wrecking people. I don't have much invested in the way of strength or dex, but this is a weapon that scales crazy well with faith. Plus it's Lightning Enchanted, which also scales well with faith, so yeah, that's getting the job done. This seriously is one of the best areas in the game. I hope it does not fall apart later. That would be... That would be totally tragic if it did. And it's like... It, sometimes level design is this nebulous concept to... Articulate, but you can see it. You can see all the optional paths, how everything leads back around. It, it kind of funnels and feeds back into itself. Uh, tons of optional pathways and shortcuts and... This puzzle element that, uh, that brings everything to life. Plus, it's gorgeous down here. It is awesome looking. This cavern. I don't think this is an an, an environment we've seen before. Again, another switch. I don't know what I don't I don't know what to do with. Uh, we're gonna try shooting an arrow into this. I know there are switches like this later on in the area that you hit. Maybe it's a drop down or something. I'm sure I'll figure it out as time goes on. Maybe when I have time to explore it at my leisure. Oh, shit! Bridge and a dragon, never a good combination. Uh, Sin did destroy uh, the two enemies on the bridge, though. I think there were two Great Lance wielding sunken knights waiting for me. And Focus Souls, so... That event seems like a good place to cap this off. Not sure how far away we are from a boss, but... We'll deal with that next time. For now, though, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.